Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you today. We recognize your presence. There's a sweet presence of God here. And we just yield ourselves to your presence right now. It's overwhelming. Sing that out. Lord, for this moment that we have here in your presence. Man, there's just a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to yield to that. We worship you, Jesus. You're so good, Lord. We love you. We honor you today. Father, look at the needs of the people. Look at every single person, Lord, that's out here, Lord, together. I pray, Lord God, that you would grant each and every person pools of rivers of refreshing that would come from your very presence, Lord God. That we would sit at your feet and drink from the cup that's in your hands. That we would fall in love with you and gaze upon the beauty of your glory. That we would gaze upon the beauty of your holiness. That we would be raptured in divine romance with you, Father. That our eyes and your eyes would meet with us. That you would birth something new in us, in our own lives, in our own homes, in our families, with our children, Lord. That you would do something new. That you would do something new. It is your presence, Lord, that changes us. It is your very glory, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Lord, I also pray for every person that has every need right now. Touch every need, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for every person that's in this congregation. Lord, if they need healing in their bodies, Lord, I pray, Lord, as they yield themselves to you, as they're still and as they know that you are God, that you would minister to their bodies. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling financially, that they would know that you are the provider, Lord. Lord, for those that need a personal breakthrough in their lives, Lord God, maybe you felt dry, you feel cracked and dry and so dead. Father, I pray that you would pour out your water to them and revive them not by might nor by power but by your spirit we give you the glory for all of the testimonies that are about to take place in victory church lord i thank you for the testimonies of breakthrough testimonies of testimonies of of healings of wonderful things that you're doing and we vow to give you the glory for it in jesus name now lord i pray that you would give us ears to hear what you are saying to us in this moment. That you would give us eyes to see what you're wanting to show us this morning. 
that you would challenge us and bring us deeper into the realms of prayer like never before. Prick our hearts, every single one of us, I pray. In Jesus' name, may we walk out of here not the same, but differently. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Yeah, so I had a great Christmas. It was good. We felt um, at home, even though we're not in Florida. It was, a, it was a blessing. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray real quick. And today I have a word that I believe that, that will stir you. And it's my prayer that the Lord would do something new in all of us. Amen. 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 Father, I just pray in Jesus' name for every single person that's out here. I pray, Lord, that whoever's watching even on the live stream, I pray that you would give us what you want to give us this morning, yes. and I pray that it would glorify you, change us, do something new in us today. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, speak to our hearts. Let us walk away with, with bread. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Today, I'd like to expound on a series of messages, and um, I'm going to ex be expounding on these messages in the weeks to come. Uh, concerning a particular subject that I believe the Lord wants to bring to our attention. What I intend to bring forward this morning and the beginning of this year is a subject, a subject of great importance, and it is the subject of prayer. Everyone say that with me, prayer. The subject of prayer. Today I'm only going to talk about an aspect of prayer. Prayer is a lot like a gem or a diamond. There are many sides to prayer. Prayer is like a gem or a diamond in that a gem or a diamond is a precious stone. It's something that we don't see from the outside. Gems and diamonds grow from beneath. They grow under the ground. No one sees them. But they form in secrecy. And prayer is a lot like that. Prayer is like a gem. So I'm only going to talk on one facet of that gem. In the weeks to come, I believe the Lord wants to remind us concerning the importance and the value of prayer in our lives. And boy, do we need prayer. Amen. Do we need prayer more like than ever before? Yes. We're going through tremendous turmoil, not just in our nation, but in the world. And boy, do we need prayer. Amen. So this, I believe, is one of the most important subjects that the church needs to hear in this hour, in its prayer. We need to return to prayer. Yes. If you look at every move of the Holy Spirit in our nation's past, you look at some of the great awakenings with Charles Finney and the Wesleys, you look at many of the revivals that people have experienced, they were all birthed through prayer. Not one genuine move of God did not precede prayer. Everything stems and originates from the place of prayer. It was Elijah that went up to the mountain and he prophesied these words to the king. He said, it won't rain until I say so. And the Bible says that as he prayed, it began to rain. He assumed the fetal position in prayer and it began to rain. Prayer gives birth to rain in our lives. There is no other subject that Satan himself fights against than the subject of prayer. We can talk about so many things. We get so excited over so many subjects. But the, the prayer meetings, they often don't happen in today's churches at large. It's because Satan is trying to fight that because he knows that that is the solution to our nation. The solution to our nation is not necessarily leadership, although God uses that. The solution to our nation is not cultural reformation, but it's the gospel, birth through prayer. And so we're going we're gonna to get into this. If we do not value prayer, we cannot receive the blessing of prayer. Uh, last week we talked about the wise men and remember we talked about how communion um, is seeking. Part of that aspect is seeking God. We can't value something we don't seek. 
or we can't seek something we don't value, rather. And we need to value prayer right now more than ever before. Prayer is the vehicle in which God ordains change in your life and revive you to himself. I'm going to say this again. From God's perspective, prayer is the vehicle in which he ordains to change your life and revive you to himself. God wants to share his life with you, and he does so through prayer. Amen. And so today we're going to talk about how tr uh, prayer has a transformative effect on us. Prayer changes you. Everybody say that with me. Prayer, prayer. changes me. me. Prayer changes things, but today we're going to talk about how prayer changes us. Now, what is prayer? In the scriptures, prayer is basically interacting with God. Most frequently through a spontaneous, individual, unorganized form of petition or thanking. If you look throughout scripture, you see how Abraham prayed and he sought to speak to the Lord. You know, unorganized. Uh, it, it was as God was moving him. That, that, that is what prayer is. Prayer is interaction with God. It is to interact with him. However, for God, the posture and the motive of our hearts are very important to him. I'm going to say that one more time. To God, the posture and the motive of the heart is very important to him. Yes, it is. Let's look at some passages of, of scriptures to see how important heart and motive is to God in prayer. Job 35, verse 13. Job 35, verse 13. I'm reading from the New American Standard. It says, Surely God will not listen to an empty cry, nor will the Almighty regard it. That seems like a hard thing to say, but it says that God will not listen to an empty cry, the motive, yes. the emptiness. God has no feeling nor regard for empty prayers. In Psalm 66, verse 18, look at what King David says here, a man after God's own heart. It says, if I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. God does not hear the wickedness. If we have wickedness in our heart, the Lord does not hear. It doesn't mean that he can't hear. He chooses not to. And we're, we're going to expound on that in just a moment. Proverbs 15, 29. Proverbs 15, 29 says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Amen. How many of you today are righteous? We're righteous because of Christ. Amen. He hears our prayers. Not because of our own righteousness, but because of his. Amen? Amen? Look at what Jesus views, his view on prayer with motives and heart. We're still talking about that same idea. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. This is Jesus himself speaking. He says the following. He says, when you pray, he's speaking to the disciples. He says, when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. Jesus is not condemning praying in the street corners. Jesus is not condemning public prayer. What he was condemning was the hypocrisy in people's hearts, the motives it says, if we do things to be seen, we have our reward in full. Look at what verse 6 says. But you, who's you? It's me. It's me. It's us. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room. 
Close your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. He honors pure and right motives. There's something that takes place when we do things in secret because no one has the applause at, at that moment. At that moment, there's only one that we have an applause for, and it's the Father. Mm -hmm. And he honors one when one prayers with the right motive. Look at what verse 7 says. And when you are praying, this is Jesus still speaking, do you do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So God sees the motives. God speaks heart. That is the language of God. He speaks heart. Sure, God understands English, Spanish, Cantonese, Japanese, French. Yes, we know. But God speaks heart. The Bible says that God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit. and in spirit. what is spirit? The heart. He sees the heart and he sees the motives. God speaks heart. He sees the heart. Motives and intentions are very important to the Lord. So many times I myself have wrestled and fought with God in prayer because I find myself being resisted because my motives or intents are not pure. Am I the only one? We've all faced this in our lives where there seems to be a wall and we're praying and we're saying many things but there is a resistance. And oftentimes I ask the Lord why and as I discern my own heart, I begin to notice that my motives are not, in, are not pure. I'm asking amiss or I'm asking with the wrong motive or the wrong intention or I'm seeking to get something rather than seeing him. And this creates friction in our lives and it creates a dryness and an irritability with the Lord and with others. Today, I want to expose that to all of us. It's our motives and his heart that, he, that we see. It's his heart, our heart, rather. Let's look at another passage that confirms this truth. Psalm 24, 3 through 6. I love this passage of scripture. One of my favorites of all time. The psalmist writes a question. He says, who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in its holy place? That's a good question to ask. The psalmist is asking, who will ascend? Who will go up to the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in his holy place? Look at what verse 4 says. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. What is a pure heart to God? Look at it, 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 it expounds it here. It says, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood, nor has sworn deceitfully. I looked up the word falsehood there. And this word falsehood means vanity. It means emptiness. In other words, he's saying, who can go up to the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted their soul to vanity or emptiness, who has not sworn deceitfully. Look at what verse 5 says. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. God is looking for a generation who will ascend to the holy place, yeah. who will stand in his courts, yeah. who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted their souls to falsehood. God is looking for that generation. And I believe we could be that generation. Amen. Yes. Now, why are motives and intentions important to God? Why doesn't just God just hear every word and just honor and make the answer is known, just with every word or whoever's praying. I asked the, I asked the Lord this, this question this morning, and this is what came to me in my own heart as I was discerning and meditating on the scriptures. Because of this, 
The reason why motives and intentions are important to God is because he can't have interaction and fellowship with falsehood. His character is truth. He cannot connect nor will fellowship with darkness. He is holy. And because of his holiness, there can't be that connection. Now, his intentions are to connect you with himself. Because you are his child. We are children of God. He wants to commune with you because of this. He wants to transform you into his very image. This is an aspect of prayer. We haven't talked about all of this. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is for today. Prayer has a transformative quality. He wants to connect and commune with you so that he can transform you into his very own image. Look at what 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 18 says. It says this, But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now what is a veil? A veil is something that, we, that when it's put on us, we're blinded by it. We, we don't see. A veil is something that's put in our face that we, we can't see in what's going on. It's a darkness. But he says, whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That's prayer. Yeah. The moment you put your attention to the Lord, there begins prayer. The moment you fix your eyes on him and you begin to give him the awareness of who he is, that is prayer. When the person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. There's freedom. Verse 18 says, but we all with unveiled face, yeah. beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, Hallelujah. are being, what? Transformed into what? The same image from glory to glory, Hallelujah. just as from the Lord, the Spirit. His intention is fellowship. But the intention of fellowship is transformation. Transformation to look like Him. Yes. If you're struggling today with self-control, if you're struggling with addictions in your life, get alone with the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling to raise your children and you lack the patience to lead them, Get alone with the good shepherd. If you're feeling the weight of, of burden, of loneliness, you feel despair and heaviness, come to the one who lifts the burdens. Prayer changes you. Prayer is not just something that we do. It changes you and I. It literally lifts the blindness of our own lives. And we truly begin to see clearly and as we begin to see clearly, we begin to see Christ. And as we begin to see Christ, we start to resemble him because we image him. I want to admonish you this morning to get alone with God. I want to encourage you to get alone with God. I want to give you some practi practical application to prayer. This type of prayer. If you look at 2 Corinthians 16 and 18... If you look at um, verse 18 in the New American Standard, it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. The first thing we think about when we think about a mirror is we live in the 21st century, right? When Paul wrote this, it was not the 21st century. It was early 60s, A.D. 60s. And oftentimes when we read Scripture, we tend to, Oh, they're talking about a mirror. So a mirror is something clear for us, something that we can clearly see. We could see our full image, but not so in biblical times. Not so in biblical times. As a matter of fact, back in those days, people used a bronze-like metal to look at their reflection. They, they didn't have the technology that we had today where we can see clearly everything. They had a bronze mirror. 
and it was often warped and a little bit marred, but you can see very dimly the reflection. And this is what Paul is saying. He says, as we continue to behold that dim reflection, this is how we see prayer oftentimes. We don't fully see God in all his glory. Otherwise, we'd be in heaven. <laughs> we, don't see, we don't see the grandness of his glory right here and then, but we see through a glass dimly, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. We see through, th through a lens that is, is, is not clear, but it's opaque, but it's, it's not, but we can make out what we're seeing. And the scripture says, that is, we continue to behold through that lens, we become changed. As you begin to spend time with God, you'll begin to notice that at first it might be a little awkward for those that don't pray often. You might feel like, well, I'm talking and no one is speaking back to me. Or I'm, I'm here and my heart feels like a bag of sand. I feel worse off than I started than, I, than when I came in. Or am I the only one that has ever felt like this? But as you begin to continue to behold him in prayer, you begin to slow, slowly begin to start perceiving who he is. And as you begin to develop that fellowship and that relationship, you'll find very quickly that your spirit begins to see clearly yeah. who he is. And the more clearer you see him in your fellowship with him, the more it begins to transform you. And this is the kind of prayer that God is inviting all of us to. It is that type of prayer. It is communion with God. It is to the dr drawing near to the wellspring of life. When we draw near to God, the reason why this is so important to him is because when we draw near to God, the scripture says that he what? He draws near to us. As we begin to perceive him and pray and seek him out, we'll begin to notice that we'll have a peace that's unshakable. We'll begin to notice that we have a joy that is uncontainable, yeah. that's not moved by situations or circumstances. Yeah. We'll begin to see very quickly a discernment, although we see that maybe the whole world is falling around us. We'll have an ability to look past through those things and to see things for how God sees them. Yeah. Because prayer transforms you. Prayer changes you. Whatever God touches cannot, nor will ever be the same. And if you allow God to touch you in prayer, your life will never be the same. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need it more than ever. Yes. We need it more than ever. And I'm going to wrap this up, but I wanted to say this real quick. We need it more than ever. The scripture says in Romans that the world is travailing. The scripture says this. The world is travailing for what? Say it. The manifestations of who? The sons of God. The world is travailing. Things are falling apart. Things are being shaken. And now is the time for the church to rise and be the bride and to become the sons and daughters of Almighty God. It is time for the church to rise and to take the gospel and to take the reflection of his peace in your workplace, in your home, in every situation. By, by jails, yeah, even jails. Everywhere you go. This is what the Lord is looking for. This kind of prayer. So today, that's what we just wanted to quickly highlight. That facet of prayer that prayer is transformative. That prayer is something that we should not take lightly and we should desire and ask God to give us the value for that so that we can grow into it. Amen? Amen. Amen. What's wonderful about God is this. He actually hears our hearts. <laughs> and you could tell him, God, I don't know about this praying stuff. God, I don't like to pray. God, my heart feels like this. God, but if you ask him, he'll help you. Yes, he will. The whole point of having the Holy Spirit is to help you. Right. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the helper. 
So the best prayers you can offer are the prayers that come from the heart. Lord, I need you. I don't know how we can do this. But as you begin to fellowship and cultivate that relationship with him, as you begin to sow those seeds, like Pastor Gary was talking about a few weeks ago, you begin to cultivate fruit in your life. And it's beautiful. And that is good news. So today, I want to encourage you. Cultivate your walk with the Lord. Today, I encourage you, if you feel distant and you feel far, if it's been a couple of weeks and you haven't had that time to have that still time with the Lord, I encourage you to come to the living waters. He will not reject you. He will not cast you out. And you will find yourself blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's good teaching, isn't it? Say thank you this morning. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's just 11.15. It was really good. If you keep teaching that good and that succinctly, I'm going to be out here a lot quicker than I thought. <laughs> that was excellent. Praise God. And I tell you what, I sense the lingering presence of the Holy Spirit. Just bow your hearts and your heads with me. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty. Prince of Peace. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. In the presence of the King, there is nothing like the presence of God. The presence of God that spirit to spirit communication can touch your life like nothing else. If you this morning desire to move into prayer that is more effectual, that is of that generation that the Word speaks, I'm going to ask you to stand in a moment. If you have a need this morning that only God can touch. Maybe it's a spiritual need. Maybe it's a physical need. Maybe it's an emotional need. Financial need. A relational need. But you know there is no human entity that can touch you and make it right. Only God. Only God. And I'm going to ask you to stand. Just a moment. And I'm going to ask Chris to come back and to pray. So if you want to enter into that generation of prayer, or if you have a need this morning, and you need that presence of God to touch you deeply, will you stand now? Chris is coming back to pray for you. Father, we just come before you, Lord, today in Jesus' name, the name that is above every name. 
we thank you, Lord, and we thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, you see every single person's heart. Lord, you see every single motive. You see their intentions. Lord, you are the Lord that sees the heart. And now, Lord, look at your people, and they desire more of you. I pray, Lord God, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be granted to them, that Christ would be so filled in our hearts, Lord God, for every person that's here, that our lives would never be the same. Lord, I pray for a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit. Only something that you can do. Not us, not anyone up here, but something that you yourself will do. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to touch every single heart. That you would begin to woo them by the presence of God. That they would become the generation that seeks the Lord. Lord, that they would be the solution, Lord God, in their circumstance, wherever they are, Lord God. That wherever they are, are, Lord God, that things begin to quickly shift and move because your glory is with them, Lord. And I pray that you would do something deep today, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray so supernaturally for hunger. Hunger, Lord, even for those that don't hunger after you. It's okay. We confess that we need hunger. And so, Lord, I pray that you would grant us hunger and that you would do something afresh in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We ask right now, I ask, Father, that you will just wrap yourself around each and every person in this place. That you may teach your people how to live a life surrendered at your feet. Father, that their whole life will be just consumed by your power and your presence. That they will learn to li live, Father, led by your spirit. I ask, Father, that you just stir and awaken, Father, your power, your presence, your joy in them, Father. That you will touch each mind and each heart and give them peace. That you will create in each and every person a, a, a clean hand and pure heart, Father, and you will purify them that you would transform them, that you will awaken them, that you will shake in them to the things of the Spirit, that you will give them boldness to walk out your word, to walk out your truth in their day-to-day -day lives, Father God, that you will um, just continue to be the center of each and every home in this place in the name of Jesus, that you will give wisdom to each and every person, Father God, in every area of their life. You will give them wisdom. You will give each woman wisdom to be the wives you have called them to be, to be the mothers that you have called them to be. You will give wisdom to the men so they can be the husbands you've called them to be, the fathers you've called them to be. You give wisdom to the children, Father, so they can be all that you have called them to be. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for touching each and every life in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, and also for those who have stood, Lord, um, who have an unspoken prayer request or have something that only you can do, I pray, Lord God, that you would bring the answer to that situation. Lord, if there's a sickness in someone's body, I pray that you would touch them by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If there is perhaps maybe a loved one that's gone estranged from you, maybe a child has walked away from the things of God, I pray that you would draw them to you. You see every prayer request. You see every person who has a petition. And I pray that you would be glorified in each petition. And I thank you with the prayer of faith. I believe it, that we will see testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, Lord, those that are watching through social media, I pray that you would do exactly what you're doing here, that, you're, that you would touch through the social media avenue, that you would touch through YouTube, that you would touch through Facebook. Your anointing has no distance, and we thank you for the same anointing that is here. The same anointing would touch them there. Uh, just, I'm just going to say this because I'm just going to step out what I sense yeah, here. Yeah. One person is watching. You're a young woman, and you feel depression, and there's suicidal thoughts. Yeah. We break that off of you in Jesus' name, whoever you are. Yeah. No more nightmares. No more torments. Yeah. Peace of God 
in Jesus' name. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Yeah, I was going to speak that, Chris. Um, I started to step up and, and speak that um, into the camera. And the Lord just checked me and said, turn it to him. I'll confirm it by having him do the, right, the, the exact same thing. So praise God for whoever you are. You know you just got that word from God. And you know what that means, folks? That means God gives special attention at moments when people are desperate. He gives special attention. And we want you to know you got special attention today as you were watching. God gives us special attention all the time, doesn't he? Extra, extra special sometimes, but always special. It has been so good to be in the house of God today. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is. God is good.